Hey, what's going on? Lee Ron here. Today I have a fun process for you. This is a little more, I think, accessible uh, painting process. Now, um, follow my lead here if you want to create a drawing. Uh, this is going to be a nice moody boat scene, kind of sunset. Lots of fun nuances in the temperatures, right? Uh, if you get the drawing accurate, that's fine. If you don't, that's also fine. Uh, let's focus on just enjoying the... Uh, sorry, my microphone uh, was driving me crazy. Let's focus on just enjoying the um, the aspect of color here because there are some fascinating colors. Uh, feel free to skip over to when I finish sketching. The sketch is going to be real fast. It's a real short process. Um, and you can trace if you want to. That's fine. Uh, I will include probably something in the description box you can use. Um, just a screenshot of the finished sketch because I didn't scan it this time. The main thing I'm trying to show is the boat and the seats on the boat and its depth and the shape. That's the kind of thing you want to get accurately. Uh, observe the angles, measure them, work as slow as you need to just to make sure you get things to look nice, you know, close to. I made a couple of small mistakes in the drawing. I ended up changing the angle from above. I knew it as I was doing it, but that's perfectly fine. Uh, my goal here is to describe the scene, uh, a beautiful... Uh, sunset, you know, sun-filled, golden, orange, kind of strong, dramatic light, but also to convey a very relaxed atmosphere, especially when we see that stretch of a town in the background. Uh, that's the kind of thing I really enjoy, and I think that's that's what I love about this one. It just feels so relaxed, because we're on a boat. The boat is <clears throat> really far from the town. You can imagine the, the quiet sounds of wind or you know whatever trees or birds seagulls whatever it is super duper fun uh, so here you see this is the edge and then here's where the seat is going to be i'm following the perspective um this isn't too complex but if you don't know anything at all about perspective it may be a bit of a challenge um which is fine you know but basically i created two seats there uh, that, that are beveled up and then there's like a lower part of course for the legs uh, there's a bit of a rope there thingy and we're pretty much ready to paint uh, now my strategy here we're going to start in a second but my strategy here uh, for the painting I'll start describing it for you if you look at the reference photo uh, you'll notice top to bottom again there's this um, warmth and, and then it's kind of going down and changing into a blue uh, which is going to be really fun. There's this edge of the boat. You really want to show that. Also down below, close to where the water is, that's where you want to show the temperature differences. What we're going to have is essentially left side, very golden, kind of hit directly by the sun. Right side, a little cooler. We're going to play on the the range. Here's some ripples. That's very important too, just to show the thing. Um, we're going to basically play on the effect of cool of purples and blues on the right side. So I'm starting with a pretty wet uh, paint, could have gone even wetter. You'll see mostly I get this wash really nice and even, but there are a few improvements could have been done. Now I'm, I'm starting to make it a little more red, adding a bit more of the red into the mix to make it a little more orange. And as we move down, trying to not, not to leave too many gaps, um, I'm going to start adding a bit more of the yellow back to it so that it reflects the sky essentially. Uh, and the thing that happens is as we look down, more down towards the water, it will start bluing up. Now a lot of people are scared that their yellows and blues are going to end up looking green. The way I do this is using a middle step of a gray. That's usually what it looks like in real life as well. If you just follow the colors you see in real life, you should be fine. Now here I made a bit of a small mistake. I come back with a little too much water. It's going to throw off the wash just a bit. Not a big deal. Uh, here I go. Water, too much water. Um, there, you'll see in a second, it's going to it's going to be a little annoying, but not that bad. Um, other than that, I'm going to aim to... Um, make it more and more blue and dark the lower I go. Now, I'm very... Here, this was too much water, what I just did. Uh, now, I'm very proud of myself because um, I finished this wash up in a way that didn't require another wash. That was really important for me. Uh, now, I'm leaving the left side of the boat as a highlight. Skip that because we're going to keep that with the beautiful bright orange glow. Um, that's the main part you want to do in a bit more of a controlled manner. Um, and in the water, you'll see um, the body, the hull of the boat. I'm going a little more 
purpley, added a bit red and blue. Uh, the water will be red and blue too, because I'm kind of using the same color for everything, which is fine. You know, I'm not I'm not too pedantic on that kind of a thing. But here I want to bring a lot more yellow because the reflection uh, is starting to establish that warmth that we're looking for especially on the left side that's where you really want to keep the reflection warm now i don't want to skip it i don't want to paint uh paint it in an additional wash i want to do it now uh, which is why you'll see and i have to work a little fast because as i darken this very direct very bold wash i need to maintain its maintain its flow as much as possible right but i still need to fill in that area with a bright nice bright orange so here we go uh more yellow than red i would say a bit more and boom and that's good enough for us because remember it's still going to be dark so it's perfectly okay it's a dark orange but you want it to be very uh, vibrant uh, if you push this to be too dark it will lose its vibrancy if you go too light it won't have an impact um, and that balance i got pretty accurate so i'm happy with that i'm darkening my wash so that i don't get any cauliflowers you have to go a little darker than what you have on paper or at least match it. But if you want to be on the more careful side, you'll go darker, stronger mix. Because if you go lighter, you'll everything will float back up and you'll create this cauliflower. Now, if you look at the center of the boat, and I'm really struggling to fill in the bottom there. If you look at the center of the boat, the blue leaked into the side, into the purple. I love that effect. I don't mind that one bit. I love the way it looks. Uh, to me, that's what makes a, a, a first wash perfect. And we won't have to do anything else. We this is the first the water is done. And there's there aren't too many ripples too, so we don't have to do any complex wet and wet. This wash is done. And the only thing that's left is the um, highlight here. We're gonna paint the shadows on the boat and the background the town with some beautiful highlights and you know the rope and everything else. That's nice. Uh, so here in a very controlled manner, I'm mixing a very bright orange. I wanna make sure that this is, I didn't want anything to bleed in there. If I would have done that in the previous wash, the purple would have flown in there, the blue would have flown, in, it would have been a mess. That's not what I want. Some artists like Alvaro Castaney will start with that bright spot and then fill, cover up the rest. That could be another way of getting away with doing it in one wash. Sometimes that will work too. Uh, I'm doing some wet and wet with a bit more red because some areas feel a little more fiery. Uh, but that's pretty much it. We're going to let this area kind of dry and start working on the shadows. I forgot to draw the engine. So I'm kind of winging it from the photo reference. I'm being a little careful there. This is, this is, this is how I approach painting, by the way. It's never coloring or painting inside the lines. It's never a coloring book. I, I always imagine as if I'm rendering a shape. So I'm quite accustomed to doing these kinds of things. Um, if you want to be a little more careful, you can draw this, make sure the details there. But I have no problem, you know, drawing and painting at the same time, if that makes sense. Now, a couple of important things. The, the inside of the boat has some darker areas in it, right? That's what we want to get here. Now, I aspire to finish this in one wash. So I don't want to get too much unevenness in this part. So look at what I'm doing. I'm pushing that wash a little down. I'm going to, in a second, bring more water so that I have a nice little bead underneath it uh, that I can rely on. Here we go, more water. Rely on and take my time with another brush to start doing wet and wet to charge the areas that need to be darker. Uh, so I'm gonna grab my smaller brush. Both brushes are Skoda. We have the Skoda Barocco. And if I'm not mistaken, the small one is a versatile, though I'm not sure, I always forget. Um, and I'm doing, uh, you see, quite a strong mix there on the palette because I need this to stay. And I'm very aware that the line at the bottom is drying. I have to be very careful not to overdo this, not to do this for too long. Um, so I'm going back to my large brush and continuing. Now remember, when I come back, the paint starts to dry. So you have to be careful. Uh, the, the mixture you have on the brush is probably as wet as it was before. So you'll see a bit of a difference in temperature. It's not too bad because these are areas I'm going to darken anyway in a second. Uh, so all of these nuances go into the process. And, um, you know, the reason I explain this, these nuances is for you to understand them, to truly understand them. I don't think I can tell you, you know, if we talk about percentages of wetness and this is 60% wet, this is 70% wet, you're going to get a cauliflower. It's very hard to describe it in that manner. So I want you to 
understand the spirit of it, if that makes sense. Now I'm painting the edge, darkening that beautiful dark edge, but I'm also starting to think about, okay, I have the seats right inside the boat. Where are they going to be dark? Where are they going to be light? Uh, the top part is going to be lighter in this example, and the side that's kind of, you know, vertical, uh, vertical if that makes sense, is going to be uh, a little darker. So I'm really carving out the shape of those seats, see? Um, and hopefully it makes sense and it reads as, as such. Uh, top part starting to dry, so you have to be a little careful, uh, but we nailed it uh, and we can move on uh, to the side of the boat. Now, I'm darkening the edge here. That's gonna help me because once I come back with wet paint, I want this to stay. I want this to stay a little dark so I don't have to go back to it that many times. I'm going with a very light wash there on the side of the boat uh, and look at what's happening the dark paint we put above really plays into that and kind of moves into that. That's what you want to see. Um, that's how you make sure that, that the paint stays in its place. You know, when you have very dark and a light underneath, you're going to be fine. Um, if it's a big difference in wetness, they're probably going to keep separate. If it's a small difference, you're going to get some more movement. So it's just some things to be aware of. Now, Usually you'll get an, uh, an effect where close to the bottom, the, the middle section, the meeting of the boat and the water is gonna be the darkest spot probably. So I'm putting a bit of effort there, making sure that it is indeed dark enough. And you'll notice I'm traveling the spectrum of blues and purples mainly for the, this side of the boat. This will maximize the contrast with the oranges and yellows. Right, because the other side of the scale, the complementary colors, orange and blue, yellow and purple, they're they're in front of another on the color wheel, um, which is why I'm using these kinds of colors. Now, I made one mistake here, funny enough, in the caster. I put a bit of red, by the way. This looks really good. <coughs> I made one mistake here. I should have made the shadow a little larger, actually. I should have stretched it a bit more, uh, and I kind of stopped it too early, but that's fine. It's not the end of the world. I'm not going to fix it now because, you know, it's... It's going to destroy the flow, in my opinion. But this shadow could have stretched just a little lower, be a little larger, um, adding a bit of a wavy pattern for the uh, to show that this is very relaxed water, but still water nonetheless. And I'm going to add these details to the left side of the reflection. Uh, it's a bit more, I would say, on the bluish green side. So I added a bit of yellow, if that makes sense. And you're going to see it in a second. I'm just bringing in a few of these dark shadows. Now, I really want to be mindful of how I do this because there's a curvature there. And you want to start very thin. See, I'm going to rotate the brush. Thin and go into a thicker line like that. That's going to make it look the best. And you want to match that waviness of the ripples. That way you'll get this nice little effect. And what we've essentially achieved here, you know, barring some details we're going to add on the top left side of the left and top side of the boat uh, and the rope and all of that, we've essentially finished this thing in one go. Um, this is, you don't need any more than that. There's freshness to it. Of course, there's a background or some details yet to be added, but look at how beautiful this, and so you want to get the reflections down. Look at how beautiful this looks and we've managed to do it in one go without losing too much of the flow. Um, and I think if you start layering on top of that, you have to be really aware that you're running a risk of uh, losing that freshness. Now, nothing wrong with that. And there are, there are plenty of ways to do this very thoughtfully and carefully. Uh, to me, I just love the way it looks right now, so I don't want to change it too much. Um, so we're going to darken some details. Um, the thing that's left, kind of an overview of the horizon and the details of the city. There are some nuances here in how I'm going to do it. And maybe we'll darken the engine of the boat, add some details to the rope and all of that. So I'm starting fairly light here. It is light with a gray, kind of a warmish gray. Now I'm cooling it a bit more, which it should have been from the beginning a little cooler. Now, while this is still somewhat wet, I'm going to mix a slightly darker uh, mix. I'm going to remove my headphones. I'm going to mix a slightly darker mix and place it in. Now, the left side is already pretty much dry, so there won't be too much spreading out. But look at what happens now. As I get to the right side, it starts to spread up more. That's exactly the effect I'm after. Um, and now here is the nuance there. You need to show some reflection for it to read as water. So uh, what I'm going to do is just, just get the line as straight as I can and come back with a damp brush and just travel across the line to loosen it up 
just a bit. You see how it loosens it up and ever so slightly it starts moving down below. It's not going to be enough, so I'm actually going to come back with uh, a brush that has just a very small amount of paint in it. Just to show some kind of a reflection that's a little paler uh, than the original paint that's there. We're going to do that in a second. If you look at the shadow under the boat, now you can probably see it's a little too short. It should have been longer, right? Uh, but that's fine, the impression is still there. <clears throat> so I'm going to do the same thing on the left side, on the left mountain ridge as well, just to show, well, I'm still softening the edge there, but just to show that there is a reflection there, it's quite important. Otherwise, it won't really read as well as it could as water, uh, which is ultimately what we're after. You know, uh, whether we get the small details to look perfect or not, uh, really irrelevant. The overall impression needs to look like water. That's how I prefer it, at least. And we're pretty much done with the background. Uh, now we're going to just ever so slightly darken the engine. Um, it just needs to be a little stronger. I don't mind that because it's kind of a separate entity. And you'll see it does lead to some improvement. And once we're done with that, we're pretty much left with maybe minor tweaks and details, but mostly the highlights on the rope, on the city. The city has some very nice lights on it uh, that I would love to showcase. Um, that was, again, a big part of what attracted me to paint this scene. So we're going to grab some opaque John Brilliant Shinhan PWC Great, great paint, kind of titanium, white-ish. Uh, and very carefully, just paint next to the rope uh, on to the left, because the light comes from the left. Same for the parts that are around the water. That's where we're going to get an even nicer contrast. I kind of forgot to add that loop uh, knot there up top that could have uh, improved it significantly, but that's fine. Um, and then we're going to do the same thing. We're going to start applying some of that paint to the background to give the feel. There's a town there. The, you know, evening falls, you start to see the lights. That kind of a, that's the kind of effect, very relaxing. That I think, you know, it's such a small part of, the, of this scene, but it's actually a huge part. To me, that was one of the things I uh, aspired to show there. Um, so trying not to overdo it, but I still want to show quite a bit of those lights, you know. Because uh, that's really what attracted me in the scene. So we're going to drop a few more of these, make some of them a little more close together to really show, you know, maybe it's houses, maybe it's whatever. Whatever it is, the brain of the viewer will read them. Uh, and that is, if I'm not mistaken, pretty much it. I'm just smearing some of them to make them a little blurry. When something feels too prominent with the white gel pen, just go over it with the tissue. I'm going to sign this one and we're going to look at the end result. Um, I hope you like it. Um, I, I will do a zoom in and then we'll do a side by side as well. I find that these are really fun to do. Overall, great flow, you know. Uh, could be a little more polished, but you know, I don't mind that. Uh, I think it looks good. The one thing you'll notice is I changed the angle of the boat a bit. My colors are a little off, but that's fine, really. I don't mind that one bit. Uh, but in any case, I really hope you enjoy this process. I think it's very accessible for beginners. It's very easy to think in terms of just two contrasting temperatures, right? Orange, blue, right? Or maybe yellow and purple. But both of these, you know, whichever you choose to focus on or do both, uh, I think it's great. I do want to thank you so, so much. Thank you to everyone who supports me over on Patreon. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you to anyone who gets the courses buys the books, whatever it is, if you want to learn how to draw, how to paint, how to paint loosely, how to uh, paint realistically. I've got all the links in the description box below and I really do appreciate it. We'll catch you in the next video. Until then, take care.